Hello! Delivering a little packet today. This is from Speedybee and it's a Bluetooth UART adapter. Basically the idea of this is you can hook it up to a UART on your quad and it connects to your phone with Bluetooth and there's an app so you can change your settings and stuff. So, um, I mean, a lot of quads have an OSD now to be able to do these settings when you do it via your control. But for ones that don't, uh, this could be interesting. So I think we should open it up, see what's in there, get it connected and see exactly what it can do. Is there anything you can use this for that you can't use an OSD for, for example, or, or what? Let's check it and see what happens. Okay, so here's the speedy packet. So let's take a look at it. The QR code here will take you to uh, the website, which will tell you a little bit more about it, give you the downloads for the app, although you can just go into the app stores and do it. And it's got basically the configuration of what you've got there. So inside the packet, there's really not all that much. You've got the little Bluetooth adapter itself. Again, some of this is uh, pretty straightforward. Ground, three to five volts, TX and RX. That all goes to UR. It's the BLE switch that takes a little more thinking about. This is something that will enable and disable the actual Bluetooth device. So you don't get any interference during flight. Uh, I'll come to that in a bit. It's just a sticky pad for sticking it on. Bit of heat shrink cable. This end plugs in there and you can solder these directly in or make up a little adapter. And finally here you've got a little user manual, which is actually pretty good. So it's got specific instructions about assigning Bluetooth to the switch of the throttle if you're running more than 3.3 uh, and some CLI instructions, which I'm going to check out because this, uh, this is the new bit to me. Um, yeah, it's pretty obvious how to connect it to the UR. It's just the fact that you don't want this to be activated unless you're not, you're not flying. Obviously then this goes hand in hand with an app, but at the moment we haven't got anything to connect to, so nothing much is gonna work. Okay, just to explain what I've got here, I've got this old SP Racing F3 board. And what I've done, I've got the little module I've soldered in to connect to UART2 and this BLE switch I'm going into motor five. So I'll show you exactly what I did in beta flight to set this up. Okay, so the BLE switch works by getting a signal through a software serial port. So the best place to start is this page here. This is the single wire software serial page. And it tells you about, depending on your board, which potential pins are gonna be available to use like this. Now I've gone ahead and I've used a SB Racing F3 board, um, although there's that there's loads listed here and the omnibus ones are. Now there seems to be loads of ones here for me, but I'm going to use the motor number five uh, because I've already got some pin headers on the board and it's easy for me to plug into it. Now if I was smart, I would have noticed that the pin for M5 is number B8, but uh, what I just did is is basically check that. M5 was a potential pin and then I worked out my pin myself but uh, I wouldn't need to do this. So here we are in beta flight and I flashed this board to 331 as it seems to be better when it's 33 plus in, in terms of using this. So my first thing to do is go to the port tab and configure the UART I've plugged it into. On this my only free ones UART 2 so I set it to configuration MSP at a board rate of 19200 as per the instructions and save that. Then I go to the CLI and I use the resource command to work out the pin uh, identifier for motor 5, which is here, which is B08. And if I'd have paid more attention to the last web page, I wouldn't need to do that. But it's quite handy just to double check that is actually the case. Now, the next bunch of instructions come directly from the SpeedyB instructions, which are the pin IO config and pin IO box commands, which I'd never used before. And I've looked it up. The basic way of looking at it is they assign a certain type of I.O. to be available uh, on a certain serial ID. And basically we want to set this to tell us when it's armed or disarmed. So the only thing we have to do here, aside from following the instructions in the book, is just to change the actual pin number. So the Peneo config, Peneo box are the same. But depending which resource you allocate, and for me it's Motor 5, you may have to free up a different type of thing. So by setting resource motor five none, we free the pin up to use elsewhere. And then we can go ahead and reallocate that pin to our specific IO we want. Sounds more complicated than it is. As long as you get your pin number for what you want to use, you'll be fine. And as soon as we save that, we can carry on. Now I've connected this receiver to it, 
because we need to show it armed and disarmed. The plug going down here is um, to provide power. So this board takes five volts through, well, one of these inputs as opposed to having it through the the voltage in. So uh, I've just got this ESC hanging around here that I'm powering with. So I'll turn it on now and see that it all jumps into life. So what I can do then is if I start the app up and search for it, it pops up there. And you'll see the little light comes on when we connect to it. Now, when I got this, I thought, oh, it's just gonna be something you can change the pits with and stuff. But what we've got here is actually a full, well, I say a full version of Betaflight. It's not quite full, it's, it's a little bit different. It's obviously changed around a bit for the phones, but you can do loads of stuff that you can't do in the OSD, for example. So if I was to go, this is in the CLI. God, don't ever try typing it in a UV finder. What is my small angle? Small angle is 25. So if I was in the field and found out that I needed to change that and I didn't have um, a laptop with me or something, I could actually do it through here. I like the idea of being able to set stuff uh, that I couldn't do, even if I had an OSD. So if we run that, and save it. Rebooting. And we should be back. And so some things are a little bit laggy. If we go into the, where's radio? If we go to our receiver, so if I go ahead and move this roll stick, it's, you know, a touch slow there but not the end of the world. It's much faster on things like, uh, this is the modes. So if I was to change my into angle, and that one goes to beeper, which is here. So that's another really cool thing you can do um, in the app, which you can't do in an OSD, which is set modes up, which is quite cool. Now it should be the case as well, that so if I go and arm this, arms. it tells me that uh, you've been armed, so it tells me to disconnect. So if we do that, you'll see the light go out. And if we try and scan for it, it actually comes up, but if I actually try and connect to it, nothing will happen. And if we now refresh, it's gone away. But if I then disarm, Disarmed. back it pops, and we can do stuff with it, connect back in. So pretty impressive stuff. So I really like things when they just work, but there's one thing I like more than that, and that's when something comes along and does more than I thought it would do. And that's the case of this little thing. When I heard about it, I thought, uh, yeah, it sounds all right. It sounds like something that people without OSDs might like to do their setup on. Um, but really, it's the app that's the star. Having basically a fully-fledged version of Betaflight that you can connect to wirelessly on your quad and be able to change anything without the hassle of taking a laptop or a tablet and then a cable and then getting the right cable and having to plug it in. It's really impressive. I was really pleasantly surprised with that. And, you know, I put it on the little SP Racing F3 board because it didn't have an OSD. But... Of course, even if you had like an omnibus board with an OSD on board, you can still set up so much on that, including the OSD itself. You can move things around on the screen and you've got all the CLI commands. Where I thought this might be even better is for people with planes and iNav. Um, and I talked to SpeedyB and I said, have you got any plans to expand this? Because I thought it would go really nicely on iNav. And I actually said that um, in Android, it supports iNav Mission Control and the CLI tab, but for the next version, iOS, it will support iNav. So if you've got it embedded deep in a plane, which is awkward to plug in, and plus iNav, at least when I last looked at it, needs a lot of CLI commands to sort things out and uh, basically configure it and, and sort of get things set up correctly. Um, so yeah, I'm quite impressed with this. Um, 
I guess the only thing is that there's a certain amount of setup you'll do and it's all sort of front loaded. After a certain amount of time, you probably won't need to do as much setup. But if you've only got one or two quads, then having this available to you and being able to change those setups is, is quite good. And it's like 10 bucks. It's, it's a pretty good deal, I think. Anyway, there's a link to the product. It's sold through uh, Security Camera 2000 and bizarrely came in the run cam box. But Speedy Bee is both the name, I think, of the product and the company. Uh, check it out if you want to. Quite good, I think. That's all from me. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.